hello and welcome to our Tuesday encouragement for this week. I wonder if you can think of an occasion in your life or perhaps more than one occasion when you've started something and then felt really frustrated or disappointed because you've not been able to see that thing through to completion. I can think of no end of occasions like that in my own ministry when I've begun a journey with somebody and then for some reason that journey stopped and it's not been completed when perhaps I've begun the task of introducing Jesus to a person and then they've never got to that place of coming fully into relationship with him. Well, in a moment, it's going to be my privilege to introduce to you a member of our church family, Stella, Stella Wint, who works for an amazing organisation called the Langley House Trust. And Stella, in her day-to-day work for many years now, has had exactly that frustration and that disappointment of beginning journeys with her clients and then sensing that they've not come to any um, completion. Well, she's got a great story to tell, which reminds us that actually she's been but one link in a chain that God has been using to fulfil a work in a person's life. And those very people that she thought that she disappointed and let down or those journeys that she felt weren't completed, God has reminded her that he's sovereign and he's used somebody else to complete the journey that perhaps she was originally a part of. It's a great story. Well, it made me think a little bit about some words that are captured in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. There's a bit of a dispute going on. There's division starting to rear its head in the church. One group of people are saying, well, I'm somebody that follows Apollos. And then another group are saying, but I'm somebody who follows Paul. You can see how these two individuals were becoming the source of disunity. And into that, Paul writes and says, do you know what? The important thing actually is that we're following God. It's God who begins the journey. It's God who completes the journey. People like Paul, people like Apollos might have the opportunity to be one link in a chain, but it's God who joins up all of the dots to bring it to completion. This text that I'm about to read for us involves these amazing words that you see pop up in scripture over and over again. And it's two simple words, but God, but God. And into that, I simply want to say today, as you hear Stella's story, that we might sometimes feel really frustrated that we begin something and we don't see it completed. But I would remind you of these words, but God, but God is able to complete the thing that we began, but God is able to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. Listen to these words. These are from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5. What after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their own labour. For we are fellow workers in God's service. We are called to God's field, to God's building. So if you feel disappointed or frustrated about something that's not completed, remember these words, but God. And as you listen now to Stella's story, I hope that you'll be encouraged as you discover her but God moment as well, as she's journeyed with a task that didn't feel finished and didn't feel completed. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Tell us, tell us uh, for those who don't know you, um, something about yourself. Tell us about your, your family uh, and your family makeup. Okay, hi. Um, so my name's Stella. I'm married to Les. We've been married for 30 something years. <laughs> you two, stop counting seven. after 30, do you? <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Um, we have two beautiful grown up daughters and we have three grandchildren. Fantastic. So Stella, your family clearly keep you busy um, in all of your spare time, uh, which I'm guessing you probably don't have much of. <laughs> um, Stella, you, you engage in some really interesting ministry. Um, tell us what you do for your, your working life and for your working career. Tell us something about that journey as well. How long have you been doing it and uh, who, long do you, who do you work for? OK, so I work for an organisation called Langley House Trust. Uh, I've worked for them for this is my 27th year wow. at the Trust. Um, and it's a Christian, started off as a Christian charity, it's 
still a charity, but it's, it's grown. And what we do is we work with people who um, have offended or at risk of offending. Um, we work with many people that come out of prison. We have um, services within prisons. We do um, courses in prison and we do debt counselling and domestic violence counselling. Um, but the main thing that we do is we've got just over 400 beds for people either coming out of prison or people that are coming out of acute mental health services. Um, and we work with them to kind of re-establish their life and to move on to in independent accommodation. Stella, thank you. An amazing charity doing a, a fantastic work. And tell us something about your specific role within that charity. What is it you do day by day? Okay, well, I, I've had numerous jobs within the Trust. Um, uh, I started off many, many years ago as a project worker, and I moved up through the kind of the, the managerial ranks. And last October, I was successful in securing the position as the quality director for the organisation. So I'm responsible for the level of service delivery and ensuring that we meet various funders' requirements. And, and that's clearly a huge role, um, exceptionally demanding. I know that from the conversations that we've had together in terms of, uh, of what you get up to. Uh, and how's that been during the last 12 months? I mean, clearly being in lockdown, uh, your roles probably looked a bit different and you've ended up working somewhat remotely. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's been an interesting year um, because I've also led the COVID um, task force um responsibilities for the trust um, we have some very vulnerable clients um, we have some care homes um, it's been a really really interesting um kind of situation but god has protected us amazingly we've had considering how many beds we've got we've had three outbreaks and in none of those outbreaks did we lose anybody um, God has really had his hand of project protection on us, amazingly. Well, Stella, thank you. And on behalf of the church here at CBC, we just want to say thank you to you for all that you're doing for the kingdom of God. I think it's such an incredible ministry and it's uh, great you. how God has been using you for these, what, 27 years? So only three more years before you stop yeah, I, counting how many years you've done. Absolutely. And I, I have to say, I started as a child. <laughs> very good <laughs> now Stella we have the amazing privilege of you and Leslie being part of our home group uh, in the life of the church here and you told a story in our home group on Monday night that I just thought was so moving uh, and I just wonder whether you'd be happy to tell us that story uh, here, this, here today on our Tuesday encouragement just to bless and encourage others uh, in their own journey and in their own walk with God why don't you tell us that story absolutely it will be a pleasure to um, so this is a story about a, a little while ago when I oversaw um, a hostel um, for the trust um, and um, we took pe people straight out of prison and there was this particular client that we staff had worked with, invested lots and lots of time in. Um, he had um, an addiction to heroin, he had some mental health problems um, and he'd come to us straight from prison on a life licence for um, an arson offence. Um, and as I said, staff had put lots and lots of time and investment into him. And one a New Year's Eve, I sat outside his room because he was having a mental health crisis. I sat outside his room all night because he barricaded himself in his room. And I was really concerned that he was going to set fire to the, to the project again. And I was just talking to him and I was trying to talk him out. And there was another, another staff member with me. We were trying to convince him that he could come out and we could help him. But he wasn't in a place where he could listen. And unfortunately, in the end, we had to phone the police, we had to get the police in um, to come and arrest him, they had to break down the door, they arrested him, he went back to prison. Seems like it was complete failure. We couldn't help him, he went back to prison, he went, went back to where we, where we started from. We didn't hear anything else about him. And many, many people came through the door after then, I changed jobs, kind of forgot all about it. Um, and it must have been about seven or eight years later, I was walking down the high street in Boscombe, and I could hear somebody running up behind me and I thought I was going to be mugged. <laughs> so I grabbed hold of my bag tighter and I walked a bit faster. And this guy came running up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder. I was getting ready to turn around and thump him. And I turned around and he said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, no. And I thought I was definitely going to be in trouble then. And he went, you got me sent back to prison. I was like, OK, well, then tell me about it. And he said, do you know what? He said, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I just want to tell you that although it didn't seem like I listened, everything that you and your staff had done for me, all the talks that we had, all the things and the strategies that you gave me, they suddenly began to make sense. And I just need to tell you now that 
Um, I'm married. I've got a little baby. He said, I've got my own business. It's only a small business. He was a window cleaner. I've got my own car. I've got my own house. And he said, what you, what, what, although I wasn't ready to listen at that point in time, what you and your guys said to me planted some seeds. And when I was ready, they came to fruition. I was able to put into place all the things that you taught me. Um, and I was really blown away by it because you don't often get to see what the seeds that you plant when you do this kind of work because people move on and you don't hear back from them. So it was really amazing. Stella, thank you. What, uh, what an incredible story and, and what an encouragement to all of us who Absolutely. engage in life, journey with people who engage in mission and ministry in different ways and sometimes don't see fruit for our labours. But what a timely reminder to us that our God is the God who is sovereign, the God who is able to join up all the dots in the dot to dot puzzle and make a beautiful picture. And uh, Stella, your story is such an incredible reminder of that. Thank you. And thank you so much as well for all that you're doing for Langley House. Uh, we just wish God's blessing over you uh, in the days ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you.